Hi there, my name is Dave Bryson, and today I'd like to kick off a brand new series for all of you interested in spatial analytics with Alteryx. You know, one misconception of spatial is that it's hard to use. Now, while spatial does require some specialized knowledge, you don't have to have an advanced degree in geography or computer science to understand it. Spatial is intuitive, and if you think about it, it's part of our daily lives, from finding the nearest store to pick up groceries, to seeing how long your commute will be today, to checking the weather forecast on your phone. You're probably using spatial technology and data, and you don't even know it. And look, every business has a where question. Where are my customers going? Where are my trucks right now? Where is that snowstorm headed? And how's that going to impact weekend sales? Start counting in meetings the number of times you or your colleagues use the word where, and every time it's said, that's a potential opportunity to use spatial analytics. So let's start our journey with spatial analytics and Alteryx by learning the different types of data that you'll encounter and where you can find spatial data quickly and for free. Okay, let's define what spatial data is. Most spatial data breaks down into three types. The first is a point. That's the most common type typically. A point is just what it sounds like. It's a point on the earth. It could be a store, a person's location, or the location of an asset you own. The second type is a line. A line represents a linear feature on the earth. For example, a road is a line, a river, the route generated on your phone when you ask for directions. These are all examples of a line. And then you have the scary sounding one, which is the polygon. Well, a polygon is just a fancy word for an enclosed area. So what does that mean? Well, for example, it could be a country, a lake, a postal code. These are all examples of areas that are defined on the earth. Now, just about every spatial data set you'll come across will be one of these three types. Now, in terms of formats to look out for, spatial data will usually be in something called a shapefile or KML, which is from like Google Earth, for example, and GeoJSON is another one. And, and spatial data can actually be stored in an Alteryx YXDB file as well. Any of these formats can have spatial data that is a point line or polygon. So, that's really a, a high level overview of spatial data. So now that you're equipped with this knowledge about spatial data, how do you find it? Well, what do we do when we wanna find something online? We Google it, right? Now, in recent years, there has been a massive push towards something called open data. Governments, municipalities, and other public institutions are investing in making their data available for free to anyone through what are called open data portals. Now, this is important not just for public sector use cases, but for private sector as well. Now, your business does business somewhere, right? Maybe in many places, maybe in many places you've never been to. Having the ability to access robust data sets about the places where you do business for free is a massive value add. Why, why wouldn't you take advantage of that? Now, many businesses, for example, they target customers um, and they might be interested in data such as traffic counts or local neighborhood demographics. This data is often only collected by the public sector and, and they're making this data available through these open data portals. So let's find one of these open data portals. It's very easy. Just pick a city. I'm going to brag on my hometown of Denver because they do an excellent job with open data, but pretty much any major metropolitan area or state or region is going to have something pretty similar to this. All right, so let's open Google and search for Denver open data. And here you'll see the top results will take you right to the open data portal for Denver. Now I'm going to do a search for neighborhood data. Neighborhood boundaries and neighborhood data is unique to cities, something that you likely won't find in a commercially available data set or from the Census Bureau. Neighborhoods are unique to their cities. Well, let's pretend my business wants to target customers in a neighborhood known to be up and coming with young people. 
but maybe I don't know where to start. Maybe I've never been to Denver. Um, so I need some help. Well, that's where this type of public data can really help. So let's search for neighborhoods. And here I can see Denver has this data available and I can download it. And here you'll notice all of those different data types that we talked about are listed. You can pick one, I'm gonna pick shapefile, and we can download this and look at this data in Designer. All right, so now we'll open Designer and Alteryx can read many types of spatial data formats. And so here you'll see listed in the Data Connection Manager that Google, uh, Google KMLs and shapefiles, all of those are there. So now you know what those are. And you can select the shapefile and bring that data in and we'll add a browse tool here so we can look at our spatial data on an interactive map. We'll hit the run button and there you have it. These are the neighborhoods of Denver. Now we can add a base map here to show a little bit more context. And notice here in the IRG, I have population data for the neighborhoods along with all these other demographics. And all of that was added by the city of Denver for me. And then see here at the end, we have the spatial object field. Well, and here you see that this spatial data type, this row, um, which has this data about this neighborhood is represented by a polygon or area. So we'll see more of these spatial object types in future videos, but I just want you to take note of this, that this is where the spatial data type is shown in Alteryx. So if you were ever wondering what that field means, now you know. Uh, now from here, I can add filter tools, begin to narrow my search area, find the perfect neighborhoods to target, um, we can even augment this data with our own customer data using the spatial tools in Alteryx to make our own map of where our customers are in the city. But we're gonna leave that for a future session. Now, one more thing before we go, I just wanna prove that this isn't just a US phenomenon. Let's look at Canada. Here you'll see the open data portal for the city of Toronto. Now, if we browse through their catalog of data, you'll see over a hundred different spatial data sets that are available all for free. All right, now it's your turn. Use these catalogs in your local state, region or city and start exploring spatial data sets that are available to you. Use designer and the map visualization to find interesting data sets and play around with them, have fun with it. In the next episodes in this series, we'll take a look at how you might even have some spatial data that you don't even know about and how we can use the spatial data tools in Alteryx to get at that data. All right, thanks, and we'll see you next time.